episode of Mission Talk. Today, Ginny and I are in beautiful Greek islands of Santorini. Here we are. <laughs> yes, we wish. But so I think we're at the Santorini of Sydney. Yes. Yes, right. we're at a beautiful cafe called Taste of Europe in Cronulla. Yep, so we're right on Cronulla Beach, guys, and it's got the full on Santorini European vibes. So come over. The food, the scenery, everything, like it's all happening here. Mm -hmm. And what are you drinking, speaking of? Yes, yeah, so I wanted like a shot of strong caffeine here for the afternoon, and um, usually I have a hot coffee, I don't like, usually drink iced coffee. Uh, but so the owner actually recommended this. Um, Triple shot of, uh, let me see if I can get the pronunciation right because I've been practicing for a little while. It's called a uh, Fredocini. Fredocini? Fredocino. No, no, Fredocini. Where's the piece of paper? <laughs> it's a Fredocino. Let's have a look, shall we? Yes, she's correct, Fredocino. <laughs> anyway, so that Fredocino. And um, that's an Australian website, so I guess, Fredocino. Yeah. Full on, we'll be Yeah. <laughs> So, and um, so although it looks like it's got cream in there, it's actually no cream in it, just the way the milk has been covered. Um, the layers are just sitting really beautifully with a little sprinkle of chocolate and crushed ice on top. Um, it's meant to be super strong. So let's give it a taste. That's exactly what you need, that strong caffeine here. Oh my god. Wow. I can really taste that caffeine like going through my body right now. Can you give that a try? Sure. Yeah. yeah, right. So what else have you been up to? Yeah, it's been a really busy week for me. Um, it's really been a fun week. I attended a wedding um, last week, so it was like jam-packed um, with the celebrations, you know, from Sahi to the Mehendi and yeah. the wedding day reception. It was really beautiful and great to catch up with um, so many people. And I think during the wedding time, when you kind of can reconnect or see uh, people, you know, it just, um, you know, it's all like positive, like, you know, emotions and nothing. But I guess it provokes or promotes certain conversations, you know, um, with your friends and, and things like that. So, especially in our community, right? Um, being from the Bengali or Indian like community, um, when the wedding talks like happen, like if you're single or whatever it is, you know, all the uncle and aunt is like, oh, so when is it your turn? And, you know, um, you can get those kind of like comments, right? Like, tell me about it. I get those comments. My parents get those comments about me and my brother all the time, and it's very, very irritating. Like, <laughs> aunties and uncles, please mind your own business. Just look, look at what your own children are doing, and then you know, don't comment on us. <laughs> I mean, we love you, and you know, you have the best of intentions, yeah, but um, nice. you know, like, life is not all about you know, getting married and although of course that is a you know, important part of life having um, that companionship and, and whatnot. Um, it's not the be all end all. Now, a lot of people have this um, notion that especially in you know, our I guess society, the Indian society, that a woman's value increases when she is with the man. You know, so <laughs> What do you think about that? I know you have like things. <laughs> I'm trying to like bite your tongue here. I have a lot to say about that. But yeah. However, I'm going to be very um, diplomatic about my response. So, when you choose someone to marry, you've got to not think. I think a lot of people make that mistake. Like, I'm going to get married by the time I'm 30 years old, or but you know, by the time I'm 25. Like, just hit those goals in life the age goals, but there's no such thing as that. When you choose a person, you've got to actually think about the rest of your life. I think people just think up to the wedding date, up to the functions, about all of that stuff, but they don't think that, is this person going to be a good father or a good mother to my child? Is this person going to be a good example to my children? Is this person going to be able to put up with me through, during, you know, traumatic times in life? Because, yeah. you know, while you're married to a person, life isn't all, you know, a bed of roses. Like we mentioned not. before, yeah. like there's always yeah. going to be times where, you know, you're going to have to face death of, you know, your parents or, your, you know, your relatives, your friends, things like that. Is that person going to be able to support me through those times? Is that person going to be able to support me through maybe like a financial crisis? So it's not just looking at, oh yeah, I'm just going to get married, you know, by the time I'm this age, and then I'm going to have this many kids, and everything's going to be fine, no. You can get fence house. Yeah. And, you know, so you've got to really, when you choose that person, you've got to see, is that person going to be able to stick by me? Is that person going to be able to 
do good by me and then vice versa that person has to feel the same about you so you've got to connect on many levels and so you can't just get married for the sake of it and a lot of people do that mistake and I think that's really important but I think down the track um, when people settle yeah. for those reasons yeah. and um, they face those life challenges, things just start to unfold in their yeah. relationship. The cracks start to like show, right? Um, when they're just settling for the sake yeah. of settling um, for the societal pressures and yeah. norms and things like that. But I guess what um, specifically irks me is that they feel when two people are coming together that um, you know the man is doing the woman a favor by coming into their life. Like, no, you're equally bringing something to the table and um, you both have like equal value. Yes. You know, you both have like strengths and weaknesses, um, you know, that you bring, um, you know, in your relationship. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like gone are the days where you know, a woman is completely like dependent. emotionally and financially dependent um, on a man. No. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, our parents have like, raised us to be self-sufficient and um, independent and have our own mind and have our own opinions and things like that. You know, not just um, roll over and just be puppets and, um, you know, just kind of compromise. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. always be the one to compromise. Like, of course, you're going to compromise. Yeah. It has to go both ways. Yeah. You know? So, I just find that really, really, for me personally, when people sort of like, you know, have that viewpoint, mm. um, you know, or like vice versa, where someone's going through a divorce and whatnot, all of a sudden, you know, they see that, you know, the woman has been, um, you know, the problem. Or the problem, yes. or like, oh, what did she do wrong? Yeah. You know, that's exactly um, right. And yeah. when, when um, it's time to remarry after the divorce, mm. the men get remarried really, really quickly, quickly. That's right. and the women struggle because yeah. they've been divorced. They have that stigma. You know, oh, what's wrong with her? Yeah. Like, you know, why did they get bored? Yeah. Like, you know, and that um, it's it's just such a narrow-minded, like, with all the village mentality. Exactly. To have, you know, and like, we don't live in those times anymore. Like, there's so many different reasons that people choose to part ways. Like, it's obviously not ideal, and they've tried everything in their power yeah. to make it work. Um, so you know, have a little bit of compassion for you know what they're going through. And not just sit here pointing the finger and like, you know, as if they're diseased or like, you know, mm-hmm. oh, like what's wrong with her? And yeah. That really, really gets to me. Yeah. And yeah. what gets to me is that so who made these rules that you've got to be married to be happy or you've got to be married, to, you know, by a certain age and things like that. It's just like everything is all man made and made by society. It's like, why do we have three meals a day? You don't really need to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You just need to eat food is fuel. You just need to eat. Like, you can eat six times. And you can eat six times. You can eat ten times a day. You can yeah. Eat Twenty times a day. So there's no rules, and it's just why does society have these rules that you need to get married? You need to be married at a certain age, or you need to do that to be happy. You can be happy. Or to be validated as a person. Yeah. You know, like that's that's not true. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like you know a lot of my friends, you know they. I've actually travelled a lot all by myself, but a lot of my friends are like, no, no, I'll do it when my husband, when I get married and when I have a husband, or that's the sort of impression their parents give them. No, 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 you're not to travel now. You're not to do this now. That'll happen when you get a husband, or you can buy a house together when you get a husband. But a man can do that on his own, and a woman can do that on her own. And if you are self-sufficient by, you know, individually, and then when you come together, that's stronger together. Yeah, yeah. stronger together, and yeah. you can become a power couple. Yeah. Like that, yeah. rather than, oh, you know, one, I'm just waiting for a husband to buy me this, or I'm waiting for my wife so that I can do this. No, just do it on your own, and the right person will come at the right time. There's no rule. I think if you, as a person, choose to um, adopt that, like, mind frame, where, you know, I'm just going to, like, put my life on hold until yeah. I get married, and yeah. experience life at that, um, you know, at that point, um, well, then... I don't know, I don't know what to say about that really. Um, yeah. I just think that you know you need to be more progressive and um, you need to have life experiences before you come together. Exactly, otherwise you are not going to be able to cope with the marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're living in a really sheltered world, by like going from like, you know, your home, your family home, where everything's sucked up for you, you know, and then all of a sudden you're thrown into like reality. Well, I just think it's just like transferring from one jail into another. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, okay, okay. leave your life. 
Yeah, I'm talking about the shelter. Oh, okay. Right. Mindset. Yes. <laughs> Being married is a jail. No, no, no. But that's that mindset. Maybe for some are. people. Yeah, they yeah. don't even want to break free of that mindset because they're like, oh no, that's yeah. what my family values are and stuff. Like but you that. create that prison for yourself, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So you have right. no one to blame but yourself. It's a mental like, prison. Of course, yeah. you know, you don't choose your family, but you do choose who you surround yourself with, you know, your friends, your mm-hmm. colleagues, and whatnot, and um, what kind of influence, um, I guess. You choose to, um, you know, like guide you. Like, That's right. Life. Yeah. yeah. You know, a lot of people like, you know, use um, their parental or family conditioning as um, like a justification or excuse. And of course, like I understand that. Um, but you, as you grow as a person yourself, you also have the free will mm-hmm. to make your own choices and choose who you want to associate with and you know what kind of mind frame you want to adopt. Yeah, and I hate it how they blame their parents. It's like, no, they didn't really hold a gun to your head and say do it. You actually had the free will to say yes or no. You said yes because you couldn't handle pressure and you got forced into it. You didn't get forced into it, but you saying that you got forced into it. Oh, I did it for my parents because that would make them happy. But I'm unhappy, but whose yeah. fault is that? Yeah, so many people, so many people in our society yeah. just do things to make other people, other people happy, happy yeah. make their family happy yeah. and put what they want, their needs last. Yeah, and then you're not going to end up being happy and no one's going to end up being happy that way. In the end, everyone loses. But if you actually say, no, this is what I want, this is how I see my life, everybody, you know, it, it's difficult to understand in the beginning, but eventually everyone is happy. Yeah, look, nothing worth having in life is easy, right? If it was, then everyone would be like doing it really. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yes, it, like, I'm not saying disrespect your family. Oh, your absolutely parents, not. Love, not about, your, love your parents, yeah. love your it's, dad. It's not about that you know, yeah. at all. But like, you need to also, you know, like, make sure you understand and communicate like, your needs and your wants. Your yeah. You know, as well. And in the end, they would be happy because if you go into a marriage and then you're unhappy with that marriage, it does come back to your parents. Like, your parents are not happy to see you. No, of course not. Yeah. No, of course so not. it is a domino effect. So, you know, in the beginning, it is very difficult to communicate, but you must communicate that. Just say, look, I'd rather wait until, you know, I fulfill these goals, these dreams, and if the right person comes, they come, and then I'll be happy with that person, and that'll make you happy, because what more do parents want? Parents just want their children to be happy. Of course. Yeah, it's number one goal. Rather yeah. than, mum, I'm just going to get married because I'm of this age right now, and all the uncles and aunties are asking me, why am I not married? So <laughs> let me just get married to whoever along and then there's a chance that I might be unhappy but who cares if I'm unhappy because I just made society happy. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so wrong. So lesson is don't go from my jail cell to another. <laughs> is that the takeaway here? Yes. <laughs> That's Indra's takeaway. Yeah. And <laughs> don't go from one jail cell to another. And um, but don't uh, depreciate your value as a person just because you're not in a relationship or you're not um, yeah. doing what society is like expecting of you. And I think don't wait for things to happen. Go out, make them happen, and when the time comes to get married or when the right person comes along or when the right moment is, it'll happen. When it's right for you. Yeah. Divine yeah. timing of the universe. Yeah. <laughs> Trust in the universe. All right. On that you. note, um, I'm going to be signing off and I'm going to be getting back to my friends and chino. I know, my latte is getting cold. <laughs> so. Thanks for joining us, guys. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment. We'd love to hear about your experiences about this topic. And uh, we'll see you guys soon. Signing off.